Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The CNMI sees an increase in positive cases after a month. Also tonight, the CNMI's U.S. delegates locks in some funds for transportation. And the cannabis industry continues to grow with another business receiving their license. In sports, the showdown at Cowtown is set for the Marianas Racing Association Championships. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skid Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skid Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. They'll see you before you see them. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team, and you cannot spell team without me. M-E. You get a shot and opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. So let's go for a save, a strikeout, a knockout punch. That's our goal. V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win and we can all celebrate. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, July 5th, 2021. After a month and a half, the CNMI sees another positive case of COVID-19. According to CHCC, the individual was identified by travel screening and was confirmed positive for the virus through testing upon arrival. The individual has been moved to the designated isolation area for close monitoring. CHCC has already initiated contact tracing for the most immediate contacts and for passengers on the same flight. That brings the total number of COVID-19 cases to 184 since March 28th of last year. The U.S. House of Representatives okays million-dollar projects that will assist the CNMI's transportation needs. Congressman Gregorio Kilili Sablon has requested funds that will cover transportation projects on Tinian, Saipan, and Rota. The invest package included in the America Act was passed by members of the United States House of Representatives, which may allocate over $18 million to the CNMI. These monies will go to the Commonwealth Office of Transit Authority, who has requested for 187 bus stops and to other partnering agencies, such as the Department of Public Works. 
Other projects include pavement improvements, drainage, road repair, and the design and construction of transit maintenance facilities in Rhoda and Tinian. Another investor adding to the Commonwealth's cannabis industry. Canna Marianas receives their license and can now operate. Louis Rogers is the owner of Lumar LLC, doing business as Canna Marianas. Canna Marianas received their Marijuana Producer Class 1 license and their Marijuana Retailer license on Friday. Having a retail license means they may legally sell marijuana to residents who are 21 and older. And the Producer Class 1 license allows the licensee to have less than 750 square feet of canopy space for planting, cultivation, growth, harvest, and drying of marijuana. Roger tells us why he decided to invest in the cannabis industry. I think anyone uh, who sees an opportunity for a new market kind of wants to be able to take a stab at it and see where the success, the success of it can go. I'm a veteran, you know, and so there's a lot of uh, men and women that are coming back with PTSD. So um, I see cannabis more um, as a holistic process, a uh, holistic product to be able to help uh, people. Um, who may be combating certain uh, illnesses or inflictions or um, uh, ailments, uh, anxiety and, and such. So I believe in the product from, you know, at that uh, level. But Rogers also notes that some people use it as a social project as well, which is okay. People who want to, you know, go out and consume it, you know, for a great time, you know, there's definitely that benefit to it as well. So I'm absolutely not knocking that. Um, I like to have a drink and I may occasionally indulge, you know, uh, if there's some cannabis that's available. So uh, all around, it's really just the opportunity to, to be a part of a brand new market in the CNMI to, to help our economy. Canna Marianas will use a tent system to grow its product. We're growing hydroponically. Uh, it's a small room that will allow me to be able to harvest about two and a half pounds every two months. Uh, for something that we will sell uh, on the shelves inside of uh, Canna Marianas Retail. Roger states he expects to be able to sell products around the end of this month or early August. We take a closer look at how Simplified Arrival in the airport was introduced and how it works. Take a listen. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection implemented the Simplified Arrival process in the Saipan International Airport last month. Simplified Arrival is an enhanced international process that uses facial biometrics to automate the manual document checks. Mark Pablo, who is the Chief Public Affairs Liaison in Guam, tells us how CBP even got this idea. Uh, CBP came about this idea uh, through recommendations from the 9-11 Commission and uh, through a congressional mandate uh, to biometrically record the entry and exit of non-U.S. citizens. Uh, so with that recommendation, years of testing did happen, uh, and it demonstrated that uh, biometric uh, facial comparison technology um, is the most secure and, and efficient and cost-effective way to fulfill that mandate uh, while also protecting the privacy of our travelers. Around 2017, CBP finally developed the biometric comparison technology, or now known as Simplified Arrival. It was assessed uh, by the National Institute of Standards and Technology as one of the highest ranked facial comparison algorithms. Currently, there are 127 airports across the United States that has implemented the simplified arrival process. And for those who may have doubts on the new system, Pablo says it's not really changing anything, especially for frequent travelers. What everyone should you know, realize is that the, the, the technology is different, but the process is the same. So every time you've traveled into Saipan, um, you were at least for our foreign travelers, right, and our permanent residents, they were being photographed and, and fingerprints were taken. Um, so what, what simplified arrival is, it's just, like it said, it's simplifying that process. So we're, we're trying to eliminate the fingerprint side um, and simply stick with the photograph to, to verify that passengers. As for simplified exit, there are 33 airports across the U.S. that have already implemented that. And since this is a public-private partnership with the CBP and airports, businesses now are really just getting a feel first of the arrival process. So today when you travel, you know, the process, right, you go to a kiosk and you enter your information and all that good stuff. 
uh, what Simplified Arrival can do for the exit portion, Simplified Exit, uh, everything is done with your facial recognition. So you walk in, your, your photo's taken, it links to your travel, checks in your bags for you. So from curbside to departure gate, it totally enhances that process. So it's beneficial to travelers and it has the uh, best things for them to worry about, right? To do just to get on that aircraft. Travelers are still required to bring all necessary documentation, such as passports and visas, wherever they go. Coming up, there was no parade this year, but members of the community still came out and showed their Liberation Day spirit. Stay tuned. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. Drop into the Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. It's fast food that's good for you. Our July Smoothie of the Month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. It's a healthy blend of 450 calories that's perfect for a meal replacement or supplement. Shake it up at Gold's Gym. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. It's the second year that there weren't any of the traditional festivities we usually have on July 4th, but that didn't stop others from showing their Liberation Day spirit. It wasn't big like what the islands are used to, but members of the community came out on Sunday, giving honor to those who served our nation. Happy 4th of July! Happy 4th of July! This is the second year when the, the Liberation Day festivities has been postponed or cancelled because of the pandemic. But, you know, it's, it's really a time, you know, for, for that our community look forward to every single year, right, to celebrate. And, and a parade is something that is, is most, uh, you know, look forward to. And we thought motorcade is the most, the, the most safest, you know, uh, route to be able to celebrate the, the, the activity, the festivity today. 
and really we just wanted to you know uh, do this in honor of those that liberated our islands and members of our community and also to acknowledge and appreciate our veterans and members of our armed forces that you know that are serving today and continue to safeguard our liberty this is such a, a spirit of volunteerism that we want to share with our community and uh, because we support the uh, service members who are in the Guards and Reserve, we wanted to know, let them know that, hey, we're here in support of, you know, their service uh, uh, to the country. And also, you know, we also continue to remember those that have left us, but remembering the sacrifices and all the honor that they have given to our, you know, to our country and for our safety. Well, one thing that is the same is that it looks like it's going to rain, right? And that happens every 4th of July. <laughs> but uh, the biggest difference, of course, uh, well, aside from last year when we didn't have a Liberation Day festival either, is that we that the pandemic has made it just different for everything. Uh, so motorcade is not the same as a parade. You don't have that same interpersonal contact with the people along the route. Uh, there, there aren't the presentations from the from the different uh, parts of government, the governor. You, you can't connect with the, the people the same way. But at least it is something to show that, that you know, we're happy to be a part of the Commonwealth. We're happy to be a part of the United States. So. We just want to tell our people here, our community, happy Liberation Day and enjoy your day. Really nice to see this, this event, have a mortgage and just come out and enjoy what independence means um, for us to be our freedom to appreciate the little things in life, especially this whole pandemic that really changed all of our life, whether it's business, personal, um, or family. So again, I want to wish everybody a happy July 4th. And for those who didn't join in on the motorcade, they were most likely at the beach with family and friends. But if you were at Civic Beach, I bet you were with Rose the Cow. 
This is a rose come out to Borja. She's six years old. She's been uh, in July 4th for so many years. She's a very smart girl. According to Sebu Borja, he only takes out his cow rose on special holidays, allowing people to pet her, take a picture, and even have a ride. This July 4th, Rose was definitely the highlight of the day. So what I did today this morning, I paraded by myself from uh, the Chamorro village here all the way down to Adajim, three times in the morning and three times in the afternoon. And you know, I put some, uh, I carry uh, four kids or five kids on the bow cart right over there. Borja says he enjoys seeing people ride the bow cart as it was and is still a part of the culture. How they feel when they're riding a bow cart is different than a car. And they don't know what is bow cart anyway. So I said, what? Uh, okay, this is our uh, traditional uh, car before. In the way back time, uh, you know, people, if you got a bow cart, you get to go. I mean, you can put a lot of load bringing from one end to the one end, one end of the island to the other end and yeah maybe five hour, uh, five miles per hour but you know you 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 get you get there Borja says he is happy to know that people appreciate rose this morning uh, people just uh, looking at uh, you know she rose with a bow card and the American flag and uh, what you call this uh, people just amazed that uh, uh, they see this in the, not every day. This is at least twice a year, but I'm trying to make it uh, like if, uh, 10 times a month. So oh, people wow. can, you know, I, I, I want to bring it back to our culture the way it should be. Borja says he does have bigger plans to share with the community, and this time not just with Rose, but with other animals he has on his farm. All right, coming up, a thrilling father-son duel. Stay on track with KSPN2 Sports next. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. The Tan Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. We're in a race whether we know it or not. And build our new normal. Enough of my to be out. Let's activate
Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Buenas sports fans, happy 5th of July, or should I say, happy 4th, 5th of July. The Marianas Racing Association is going to conclude their season, their championship point season, this uh, month, coming up on July 25th. Here's a look at the current standings. This was the scene back in January at the Cowtown Racetrack, the first time it had been used competitively since the late 2000s. Ah! <laughs> MRA members volunteered manpower and materials to improve the track each month. The racing series started and completed now six monthly events. Here's the leaderboard for the 11 divisions. At the top of the Pee Wee One, Ezekiel Camacho, followed by Zane Fujihira and Tonan Jacopo. While the Pee Wee 2 class is dominated by Genoa Santos, Keenan Tagawa and TJ Ferrer follow. Pee Wee ATV, Brooklyn Susalin, Skylar Tagawa, and Keona Rosario are running 1 2 3. Teresa Borja leads Jesus Santos and Melvin Regis in the mini ATV, while Kristen Camacho running away in the big boy ATV class. In many one, it's Delvin Umel comfortably in first, then Harley Susaloon and Stanley Yacopal Jr., who's a survivor from his last race. Any any trouble out there? Uh, one time. What happened? This guy uh, crashed. During the race? Yes. Are you okay? <laughs> Michael Camacho tops mini two, followed by Ethan Umel and Mari Alvarez. Over in the power puff class. Billy Pangolinans leading Nanako Celis by only one point, leading to a big showdown July 25th. Henry Camacho Jr. leading Corey Pangolinan, his cousin, and Kiracta with two races to go in the novice class. The veterans are ruled by Dave Celis with Kuki Alvarez and Melvin Cepeda hot behind him. Celis in the lead, followed by Bob Cepeda, followed by Kuki Alvarez. Expert division, Alvaric Alvarez leading with his dad Kuki right behind him. And they ran that way for the first nine laps. Final lap. We've seen this before. The more experienced Kuki passes his son on the final lap. There's the checkered flag. Kuki takes it. Alvarez in second. Kuki, uh, why, why you do this? You got nothing left to prove. What's the point? Oh, yeah. I just want to inspire all these old folks that think it's too late to start motocross. That there's hope. <laughs> yeah, just uh, stay in shape, live a healthy lifestyle, and practice, 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 and you'll be up there with the best uh, of them. Uh, do you, do, be honest, did you feel extra pressure when you're racing against your kids? Well, I kind of know he had more pressure than me because he was in front, and he couldn't make the mistake because I was on him like white on rice, you know what I mean? And so I was kind of forcing him to make an error, trying to scare him a little bit, and I did just that. That was my game plan. Conserve energy, don't try and do anything dumb, and just take him at the right time. So it worked. 
Not such a good outing for Kuki's other son, Shane, who had a broken collarbone at the start of the season. I, you feel any extra what? pressure when you're when you're oh, racing? Man. Especially my dad and my brothers are in there. My dad and my brothers in there. And man, they they fast as heck. I'm still a little injured from last race, but I was putting in some good laps. But man, they were they were just too fast. Yeah. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. So what are you going to do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals, and the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's gym team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it. Our high temperature day, 89, the low 77 early this morning, 66% humidity tomorrow, more of the same, east winds 5 to 15, little showers here and there. High 90, low 80, seas 3 to 5 feet, sunrise 551, a low tide at 23 past noon, sunset at 651. That's your new sports and weather on this July the 5th, 2021. See you back here on Wednesday.